Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're gonna revisit a three-year-old battle because benchmarking these older GPUs, it gives me something to do now that we're, well, we're pretty much on lockdown here in Australia. So it keeps me safe from the human malware. Basically, I'm living the benchmark dream. Anyway, for those of you who missed it, I recently revisited the GeForce GTX 1070 and compared it to the much newer 5700 XT and 2060 Super, and I found those newer GPUs offered quite a substantial performance increase. Well, at least the Radeon GPU did. It provided about a 50% boost on average. Shortly after that, I decided to compare Vega 56 to the new 5600 XT. Uh, both comparisons featured over 30 games, tested at 1080p and 1440p. Having completed all that testing, it suddenly dawned on me that I should probably see how the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 compare head to head. After all, they are, or at least were, direct competitors. But before all that, Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their new flagship mechanical gaming keyboard, the K95 Platinum XT. It features immersive dynamic per key RGB backlighting with 19 zone light edge, along with a comfortable cushioned leatherette palm rest and PBT double shot keycaps. The six dedicated macro keys are now compatible with Elgato Stream Deck software, allowing you to easily and conveniently set commands such as record or take a screenshot, for example. And capping it all off are Cherry's MX Speed RGB silver key switches. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so before we get into the benchmarks, let's just recap the situation to date. So the GeForce GTX 1070, that was released four years ago, back in June of 2016. And at the time it fetched $380 US for the AIB versions or $450 for Nvidia's Founders Edition. The GTX 1070 was extremely well received by the tech media, praising its excellent value, performance, features, and power efficiency. The only thing we didn't like was the premium NVIDIA were charging for the FE model, and therefore we strongly recommended viewers avoid it and wait for AIB versions. Has to be said though, NVIDIA really had AMD on the ropes with the previous generation Maxwell architecture, and Pascal was just a devastating blow a blow that they're still yet to properly recover from. The Fury X, which had struggled against the GTX 980 Ti and really could have been viewed as a failure, was completely obliterated by the 1070. The new Pascal GPU was a little over 40% cheaper when comparing AIB pricing, but offered around 10% more performance. And AMD's answer to this brutal assault didn't arrive for an entire year after AIB GTX 1070s hit shelves. Once the Radeon RX Vega 56 did turn up on the 28th of August 2017, it was met with, well, I think disappointment is fair to say, at least from us, and we were criticised at the time by AMD fans for delivering one of the more negative Vega reviews. I said quite a few things in my conclusion, but this one paragraph I think sums it up. Overall, performance looks solid, and Vega 56 is certainly a GTX 1070 contender, even if it rocked up to the fight banging its chest over a year late. It's certainly good that we finally have some competition at these higher price points, but we feel like if you're going to come to the party an entire product cycle late, you kind of have to hit it out of the park, and that's not what AMD has done here. I was also very wary of pricing and availability at the time, and as it turns out, those concerns were warranted, given how things eventually played out. Of course, the situation wasn't helped by the cryptocurrency mining boom. The boom, combined with the very, very small margins AIBs were set to make from Vega graphics cards, meant that few invested the time uh, and well, money to develop those custom cards. And most of those that did appeared to have cut every corner possible, and that resulted in some pretty garbage products. So better pricing, availability, power efficiency, and a very diverse range of much higher quality AIB models led us to recommend the GTX 1070 over Vega 56. Vega really did have very few redeeming qualities and at the time was just 1-2% to faster than the GTX 1070 when compared in a broad range of games. However, roughly this time last year, I decided to see how Vega 56 was getting on after a number of viewers had noticed it was matching and even beating the GTX 1080 in a number of recently released titles. Unfortunately though, out of the 37 games I tested, the Radeon GPU offered superior performance in just half a dozen of them, making it 9% slower on average. Still, that was quite an impressive result overall, and it meant the Vega 56 was now 9% faster than the GTX 1070. 
Today we have a number of new games added to the benchmark list along with some older games such as Fortnite for example which have received massive updates and even feature support for modern APIs. So for testing I've grabbed the MSI GeForce GTX 1070 Gaming X and Asus Strix Radeon RX Vega 56 graphics cards, installed them in our Core i9 1900K GPU test rig clocked at 5GHz with 16GB of DDR4-3400 memory and put them to the test. So let's get into the results. First up we have the Red Dead Redemption 2 results and the margins between the 1070 and Vega 56 are very similar to what I found when we first tested the game. Basically in the more CPU demanding sections of our test we see similar 1% low performance, but for a good portion of the test Vega 56 enjoys a strong performance lead, beating the GeForce GPU by an almost 40% margin on average. The Outer Worlds is an interesting inclusion as it's a new title that uses the popular Unreal Engine 4, and as you can see the GTX 1070 easily beats Vega 56. We know that the Unreal Engine has been optimised for Nvidia hardware, and we know that with a lot of time and effort invested, AMD can get solid results in Unreal Engine games. But by default performance isn't great, and we're seeing that here, handing Nvidia an almost 20% win. It used to be a very similar story in Fortnite, in fact when we first benchmarked this game the GTX 1070 was 22% faster than Vega 56 and Nvidia's strong performance advantage was maintained for about a year. Today though it is a very different story and in fact it's now AMD who has a performance advantage, beating the GTX 1070 by a 6-8% margin, and that's certainly not a big margin, but it is a very big deal when once upon a time AMD were over 20% slower in this exact title. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is another Unreal Engine 4 title, and while AMD does offer solid performance here, the GTX 1070 is around 10% faster. However, unlike what we've seen in Fortnite, if anything AMD has gone a little backwards relative to Nvidia in this game, so that's interesting. Apex Legends uses the Source game engine, and it doesn't favour a particular brand, and we've seen this in the past with other games such as Titanfall 2 for example. Yes, Vega 56 is around 8% faster, but it is technically a more powerful GPU, so I'd say this is a fairly neutral title. Here we see that World War Z hands AMD an easy win, and that's probably largely due to its Vulkan support. Here Vega 56 was 31% faster at 1080p and 1440p, so like I said an easy win and that would make AMD GPUs the preferred choice for high refresh rate gamers wanting to slay some zombies. Rainbow Six Siege now also supports the Vulkan API thanks to a recent major update, and again we see performance strongly in AMD's favour to the tune of 31-36%. to so for those of you keen on Rainbow Six Siege, Vega 56 would have been the GPU to buy. Resident Evil 2 is another newish title that supports a modern API, and again, this one goes strongly in AMD's favour, as Vega 56 was around 26% faster at both tested resolutions. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is yet another game that's built upon the Unreal Engine 4, but here we see virtually identical performance between the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 GPUs. This could be a result of Nvidia focusing on optimizations for Turing based GPUs while AMD has worked with both Navi and GCN optimizations, but whatever the case we're looking at the same gaming experience using either product. The Call of Duty series used basically the same game engine for over a decade, but 2019's Call of Duty Modern Warfare changed all that using a brand new engine for the first time supporting things like 4K HDR and DirectX ray tracing. I'm not actually sure what the engine's called. For now it's just called the new Call of Duty game engine. Anyway, it appears to play very well with the compute heavy 5th gen GCN architecture, as Vega 56 was up to 18% faster than the GTX 1070. Performance at 1440p was impressive from both GPUs, but Vega was noticeably faster. If you don't already know, uh, try and guess which game engine Gears 5 uses. I'll give you one guess. Yep, it's the Unreal Engine 4. However, as was the case with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, performance between Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 is extremely competitive, as the Radeon GPU was just a few frames faster. F1 2019 uses the same Ego engine as all other F1 titles along with the Dirt and Grid series. However, this latest version does support DirectX 12, and here we see Vega 56 is able to just edge out the GTX 1070 by up to a 7% margin. 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider uses an enhanced version of the Foundation engine, and this time we see very strong performance from Vega 56, as it delivered an 11% boost over the GTX 1070 at 1080p. Then we see a rather large 17% boost at 1440p, and you'll certainly notice that difference at this high resolution. So, having looked closely at about a dozen games now, it seems as though Vega 56 has the GTX 1070 under control, and enjoyed some rather significant wins in a number of newly released titles. Uh, there is still a lot of games that we haven't looked at, of course, so let's see how they compare across all 32 titles. Okay, so here are the 1080p results, and as you can see, Vega 56 was 10% faster on average across the games tested. We do see that there were big 20% plus wins in titles such as Red Dead Redemption 2, Dirt Rally 2, World War Z, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Resident Evil 2, Control, Metro Exodus, and Borderlands 3. Meanwhile, Vega 56 struggled in titles such as Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and, well, that was about it. The Outer Worlds and War Thunder losses were in the teens, but overall, not a huge deal there. We find a very similar story at 1440p, and of course, both GPUs were coupled with 8GB of VRAM, HBM2 in the case of Vega, and GDDR5 in the case of the GTX 1070. Not a lot has changed in the last year. The margins remain about the same. We're looking at just a 1-2% to improvement for AMD. So... Knowing what we know now, would I change anything about my initial reviews, and which would I buy now on the second-hand market you know, if I was to purchase today? Let's start with the reviews. Obviously, this changes nothing about our initial GTX 1070 review, as Vega 56 didn't arrive for about another 14 months. Therefore, I suppose it makes sense to talk about our Vega 56 review, where we did, of course, compare it directly with the GTX 1070, and ultimately ended up recommending the GeForce product. That means had you taken my advice, you would have ended up with the slower GPU three years later. For obvious reasons, you know, I like a crystal ball and all that, we only recommend products based on what we see at the time, though sometimes we do try to predict the future when the outcome appears a little more obvious. As an example, uh, we were recommending the Ryzen 5 1600 over the Core i5 7600K, despite the fact that the Intel CPU was delivering better gaming performance at the time. It just seemed quite obvious to us that quad cores were on the way out, and having three times as many threads would be highly beneficial in the very near future. Anyway, getting back to Vega 56, if I'd known that it would be up to 36% faster three years later, and 10% faster on average, would I have recommended it over the GTX 1070? Well, I could honestly say no, I wouldn't have, or at least not initially. I would have basically said the same thing. The reference model is hot and loud, so unless you can get a high quality AIB model for around the MSRP, just grab one of the numerous GTX 1070 models. And that ultimately was, and still is, the problem with Vega 56. While there were a dozen or so high quality GTX 1070 models to pick from, there were virtually no good custom Vega 56 cards. Uh, the Power Color or Sapphire models were good if you could find them, uh, but more often than not, they were either out of stock or grossly overpriced. And to memory, they also came to market very late, as did pretty much all the Vega AIB models. So, as I said earlier, between the cryptocurrency mining boom, the lack of quality AIB models, and the slim margins, uh, Vega was a flop, at least for gamers. The mining boom might have helped save it for AMD. But what if you were to buy one secondhand today? Well, if we look at the last dozen Vega 56 cards sold on eBay, we see that the average selling price was $191 US. Typically, you're looking around $180 for the blower models, which we recommend avoiding, and then more like $210 for a decent AIB version from either Power Color or Sapphire. Also, it's worth noting that seven of the 12 models were blower style reference cards, so that kind of sucks, or rather blows. On the other hand, used GTX 1070s are selling for $197 US on average, so just $6 more, but almost all are high quality IIB versions from the likes of EVGA, MSI, Zotac, Gigabyte, and so on. Moreover, this year there have been roughly 2,000 secondhand GTX 1070s sold on eBay, so that's obviously a lot in a rather short period of time, and it's also over five times more than that of secondhand Vega 56 models. So that means your chances of landing a bargain GTX 1070 are significantly higher, at least five times greater, let's say. 
Still, if you can land yourself a Sapphire or Power Color Vega 56 graphics card for $200 US or less, then that is a pretty good way to go. And it is possible, though only a handful of them are sold for $200 US or less this month. Uh, meanwhile, dozens upon dozens of quality GTX 1070s have gone for less than $200 in the same month. So, as I said, your chances of actually scoring a 1070 are significantly higher. As a side note though, I should just make mention that kind of taking the fun out of these secondhand options is the GTX 1660 Super. It costs about $20 more, and yeah, look, it is around 7% slower than the GTX 1070, but you're buying something that's brand new. So you don't have to worry about whether or not it's been completely flogged mining or whatever. And of course it, it comes with a full warranty. So that, that's kind of a big bonus there. So in my opinion, that is really a small price to pay for avoiding the pitfalls of secondhand shopping. And with that, I'm going to end this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to do the YouTube stuff. You can also subscribe. Uh, you get more content like this and well, we do a whole lot of different content here on the channel, so check that out. And if you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed and you'd like to become more involved in the channel, chat with Tim and I on Discord, watch our live streams and interact with us there, then check out our Patreon page. You can sign up for a very small monthly fee. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.